Hi there, and uh, thank you so much for welcoming me to the Campus Party 2022. Uh, I'm Fred Henderson, and I'm a project coordinator at Ecosia, which is the search engine that plants trees. Uh, really looking forward to uh, speaking with you all today, uh, to giving you a bit more information about Ecosia and how Ecosia users are having an impact. We're also going to be discussing um, Ecosia on campus and how you as a student can make an impact at your university by campaigning with Ecosia. And there's also going to be uh, lots of time to uh, answer any questions that you have, whether that's about Ecosia's business model or where Ecosia plants trees. I'll really do my best to answer the questions that you have. Uh, so without further ado, um, I will uh, kick things off with the presentation. It's great to have you with us today. So a little bit about myself. So I'm Fred Henderson uh, and I'm a project coordinator at Ecosia and I work in Ecosia's business development team, um, which is the team which is trying to uh, reach more Ecosia users across our core markets. So my, my direct colleagues are the, the country managers for uh, countries such as Germany, France, the UK and the US. Uh, so my role in Ecosia splits down into uh, three main responsibilities. Firstly, I'm the founder of Ecosia on Campus, where I'm helping students to campaign for Ecosia at over 280 universities worldwide. I also help organizations that want to make Ecosia the default search engine for their employees, and we're able to track how many trees are planted by an organization that makes the switch. Um, as well as those two responsibilities, I'm also in charge of Ecosia's user support. So, when users reach out with a question about where their trees are planted or um, you know, how does Ecosia offset its carbon emissions, then I'm sort of managing the team that gets back to our users and answers a range of their tech support questions. So I'm hoping that some of you that are tuned in to the call today uh, are already familiar with Ecosia, but um, if you haven't heard of Ecosia yet, uh, we are the internet search engine that plants trees. So Ecosia is similar to any other search engine that you're already familiar with. So when you're looking for something online, um, you know, a search engine is the main thing that you use. Um, but with Ecosia and what are core differences from the other search engines out there is that we use the money that we make through advertising to finance tree planting projects all around the world. So Ecosia has now planted over 140 million trees. Um, and this is because of our search engine users that have made the simple switch from you know, Google to Ecosia. And collectively, if enough people make this small, small change in their lives, um, it can have a huge impact and we can plant millions of trees together. So Ecosia now has over 15 million monthly active users, which actually represents one of the largest movements, the largest collectives of people which are taking action on climate change. Um, and Ecosia, because of the number of trees that it's planted, uh, over 140 million, we're also an organization that has planted uh, more native tree species than, ever, than any other. And uh, we're at a really exciting moment um, in, in terms of uh, company growth at the moment, where we are uh, reaching more users and uh, really sort of, um, it, sort of acquiring more users so we can plant ultimately more trees. So Ecosia has been an organization now for over 11 years. Uh, it was founded by uh, Christian Kroll, who is um, a German and the head office is based in Berlin. Um, and a few years later, Ecosia became the first uh, B Corp in Germany, which is a third party accreditation, um, which I'll go into a little bit more detail uh, later on in the presentation. Um, and after that, Ecosia has also um, uh, purchased its own uh, renewable energy through um, a, a solar farm that uh, we, we purchased in 2017, which ensures that all of our operations are, are fully sustainable and that we're powered on renewable energy. Um, in 2017, we also reached the milestone of planting 10 million trees. Um, and um, as I mentioned, um, we've now planted over 140 million um, in uh, just a few years after that. So um, our capacity to plant trees has really, um, really expanded in recent years. And, uh, you know, we're on track to plant many millions more. Um, in 2018, Christian also um, sort of gave up his right to ever sell Ecosia and uh, remodeled the business structure um, so that um, it ensures that Ecosia will always um, sort of be, it will always, is always there to fulfill its purpose, which ultimately is to plant trees. And I'll go into a little bit more detail uh, into that um, as the presentation goes along. 
so this is Christian, our founder, um, and he really wants Ecosia to be um, a, a way that people can be become more climate active every day. Um, and it's through these simple changes that we can make, like changing our search engine, that collectively mean we can have a big impact together. And that's very much Christian's uh, sort of uh, vision for, for Ecosia, that everybody can make these small changes. And so one of the big questions that um, you know, I'm, I'm often always asked um, is, well, where does Ecosia actually uh, plant trees? Well, Ecosia focuses its tree planting across the planet's biodiversity hotspots. And these are 30, 35 locations um, across the globe where there's a unique range of um, plant and animal species that are potentially under threat from uh, deforestation. And so we like to focus our tree planting in these areas as they are where trees have the most environmental and uh, social impact as well. So to take an example, um, Madagascar, um, you know, an island um, off the continent of Africa, um, has sort of seen plant and animal life there evolve um, at a unique sort of, um, in a unique biodiversity. Um, and so it's really important for us to plant native tree species here um, to fight the deforestation that the, the island has, has seen. Um, and so, yes, as I mentioned, thanks to our 15 million uh, monthly users, uh, we've, we've, we've to date planted over 140 million trees. Um, planting in over 30 countries across more than 60 active projects. Um, and we're always looking for uh, new, new projects to, to support um, so that we can plant millions more trees with our partners um, and with our users. And at Ecosia, we take planting trees, um, uh, the right trees in the right places, uh, very, very important. Um, so we always follow uh, many golden rules when uh, initiating our tree planting. Uh, Namely, that we always plant native tree species and never monocultures. Uh, this means that we plant trees in locations that uh, have had those trees there before. Um, and it's always important to, to plant a diverse range of, of native tree species and, and not monocultures, because this really helps with the biodiversity um, of, the, of the project and of the, and of the location where the trees are planted. Uh, we track the trees that we plant for at least three years, uh, primarily using things like uh, mobile apps, as well as satellite imagery, um, and as well as visiting our partners on the ground to ensure that uh, the tree planting project is uh, sort of going, going well and, um, and that they're able to sort of meet their uh, commitments to the number of trees that they, they, that they were planting with us. Um, and we generally check in on our trees after three years because this is how long uh, a sapling uh, needs to be robust enough in the soil in which it's planted. Uh, and this early three years of a, of a tree's life is, um, you know, when it's most vulnerable and fragile. And so once it's survived past those three years, it's generally robust enough to survive into uh, the long term. And we always build long term relationships with our tree planting partners, um, as this really does uh, ensure that there's no um, a sort of motive for the trees to be cut down. Um, and by having this close partnership, uh, we always uh, are sort of trying to find ways that we can help our partners to scale to ultimately plant uh, millions more trees. And another question that gets asked is, so, you know, why trees? Why, uh, why does Ecosia uh, use its profits to financing tree planting projects? Well, uh, trees benefit both people and planet. Uh, it's not just to reduce carbon from the atmosphere, although trees are, are excellent at doing that, but it's also to support the local communities um, through uh, things like uh, agroforestry systems, where we're planting trees alongside uh, crops because trees can help the soil fertility of the land, which ultimately leads to um, higher crop yields and a better harvest for, for farmers. And an important point to note here is that each project always serves a unique purpose, um, you know, to the community and to that local ecosystem where the trees are planted. So, um, as I mentioned, we always plant native tree species um, and it's always in, in uh, close partnership with the local people. Um, and uh, we have to treat each project separately. So um, the tree planting methods in one location will be very different from, from another. So it's about working with the local expertise and planting trees in a holistic way. 
And I'd like to introduce you now to uh, Peter van Midwood, uh, who is our tree, uh, chief tree planting officer. Um, and he's the one who decides where Ecosia should be uh, investing its uh, profits into planting trees. So his objective is to find established uh, and scalable tree planting NGOs. So these are organizations which are already planting trees and have lots of expertise in, in doing so. Um, and it's about establishing these partnerships with organizations that can really scale and help us to plant many more. Um, and Peter has a very uh, thorough criteria when uh, choosing a tree planting project. Uh, you know, they're assessed on a number of factors, including, um, you know, what's the environmental impact of the project and how do the trees benefit the, the local people? So all of these factors are, are taken into account um, when deciding which tree planting organizations to partner with. And to give you a few examples of where Ecosia is planting trees because of our search engine users, is um, Ethiopia, where we have planted over 9 million trees uh, with uh, an NGO called Green Ethiopia. And uh, what's so great about this project is that uh, the trees are planted as part of an agroforestry system, um, as, uh, as I mentioned earlier. And the, uh, the bottom right image here is of a lush tomato field in the middle of the Ethiopian desert. Um, and planting like these, these uh, juicy tomatoes is only possible because of planting trees as part of this agroforestry system. Um, and as well as that, uh, the tree planting project is also providing uh, the women of the villages uh, with an income at a time of the year when um, it was actually quite difficult to, to, um, to sort of source income. Um, it's a, during the tree planting season, um, it's a great opportunity for, for an alternative source of income for the villagers there. And uh, another example, hopping over to Indonesia now, um, where Ecosia is planting trees to uh, fight the palm oil um, plantations, which are harmful monocultures, um, uh, really sort of uh, sucking the life out of the, the soil. And so the way that Ecosia, uh, you know, is combating palm oil here is through um, planting native trees, but also planting sugar trees. So sugar trees provide the landowners with an alternative source of income. Uh, which means that they don't necessarily need to use their land for harmful monocultures like palm oil. Um, and instead, uh, they can uh, plant trees like sugar trees, which has the economic incentive, um, but also, um, you know, working in conjunction with the, um, the, uh, the sort of the ecosystem and helping to restore land that has been uh, degraded. And uh, staying in the same region, but just heading a little bit more south, um, uh, I'm bringing you over to um, Australia here, where um, Ecosia started planting trees at the beginning of 2020. Um, so if you can cast your minds back um, to, to pre-COVID in 2020, we really thought the worst news would be um, the bushfires that were sort of tearing through Australia. Um, and so what Ecosia wanted to do was um, support the restoration um, after the uh, really sort of destructive um, bushfires that, um, that Australia saw that year. Um, and I mean, the thing that makes this uh, project so significant is that there were areas of, um, of, of trees and, and forest that should never have been affected by the seasonal bushfires. Um, so there were trees that were being uh, burnt down in uh, sort of subtropical areas. And so it's really important for us to help with that restoration um, and to, to do what we could to, um, to support that. Um, and so the way that we did this is uh, we found a, a trusted partner called Reforest Now, um, and we dedicated all of the revenue that we received from our users uh, to finance this project. And we launched a marketing campaign. Uh, so we were encouraging our users to search of Ecosia on this day because all of those searches are going to help to plant trees in Australia. And we were able to raise enough money to plant over uh, 26,000 trees in this subtropical area, which uh, never should have been affected by the uh, seasonal uh, bushfires. And just hopping over to Brazil now, where we're planting trees in the Atlantic forest, which is on the east coast um, of Brazil. And this is a, a natural forest where sadly only 20% of it um, actually remains to this day. And a, a good way to think about, uh, you know, sort of to put the destruction of the Atlantic forest into perspective 
is that um, you know this is what could potentially happen to the Amazon one day, you know, where where a huge proportion of it has been deforested, and so. If we can restore places like the Atlantic forest, it really does give us hope that um, you know we we can plant trees and we can restore um, areas that have been deforested um, to you know not only to um, sequester carbon but to also bring ecosystems back um, to to what they once were. So we have planted over twenty million trees um, in in the Atlantic forest. Um, and we're also working with firefighters there that um, are sort of helping to stop the spread of um, of firefighters uh, of fires in the um, in this area. And this is just to uh, give you an example of uh, the trees that we planted in the Atlantic Forest, where you can see in 2017 when we started planting trees on the mountain slope here, um, a lot of the soil is degraded, and it's uh, you can see that there's not many trees, but just after three years, um, you can see that we've heavily been able to reforest this uh, landscape. And uh, this is really um, you know, down to our search engine users and uh, the impact that we can collectively have together. And so this leads me on to my, um, my next part of the presentation, where I'm going to give you a bit more information about Ecosia as a business. So you've learned where Ecosia is planting trees, and you know, you know that we're a search engine that is using our profits, profits for good. But um, what does it really mean to be a purpose-driven business? And a question that we get asked is, how does Ecosia even make money in the first place? How does a search engine plant trees? How does my, how does my um, you know, mindless uh, searching for memes uh, help to plant trees in Brazil? So, um, well, like any other search engine, um, Ecosia generates a revenue from users clicking on the ads displayed in our search results. So if you type in something like, uh, sustainable shoes or, um, or, or or something like this, this, then um, the top results will be ads. Uh, and it's when a user clicks on one of these ads that um, we then generate a revenue, which we dedicate to financing tree planting projects. Um, we generally say that it's roughly about 45 internet searches to, to fund the planting of a tree somewhere. And using Ecosia, just as you would any other search engine, um, is ultimately going to help to plant trees in parts of the world where they're uh, needed most. Um, so as I mentioned, 100% um, of our profits goes towards climate action, um, and at least 80% is used to finance uh, tree planting projects um, around the world. And if this maybe sounds a little bit too good to be true, um, well, what we do is we publish our monthly financial reports. So you can see exactly how much money we make from our search engine users, and how much of that is uh, put into uh, financing tree planting projects. Um, and so the financial reports are one of like the most read pieces of content on our blog. Uh, they're very heavily scrutinized, quite rightly so, um, you know, by our users. But it's because people are so interested in, in um, you know, how much a search engine makes um, and, you know, how much is, is it investing um, in tree planting projects and in other areas of the business. So, for example, um, in uh, May 2020, um, Ecosia users um, generated over uh, 1 million euros uh, for Ecosia, and um, we were able to um, plant over six, close to seven million trees um, in that month um, through the money that we had received. Um, and we really hope that this level of transparency just makes us uh, accountable and establishes that trust from from our users that you know we are we are planting the trees that um, that we are that we're telling you that we are and um, you know it's not it's not anything that can be sort of dismissed as greenwashing because you can see exactly how much we invest in our tree planting partners. And as I mentioned at the start of the presentation, um, Ecosia became Germany's first B Corp. And a B Corp is a third party accreditation that is only awarded to organizations with a high level of public transparency um, and, uh, and organizations which need to prove that they're not just making money, but uh, having a positive social and environmental um, impact as well. Um, and so it's with accreditations like these that hopefully build trust that what we communicate in our financial reports is, is correct and has been assessed by a third party. Um, and that, um, you know, we are, we're, we're not just an organization trying to make, uh, you know, our shareholders rich, <laughs> but um, it's uh, about having a positive impact 
um, to communities, to wider society, and in our case, the environment as well. And another interesting thing about Ecosia's business model is that our founder, Christian, who I introduced at the beginning, he gave up his right to ever sell the company's shares. Um, and this means that Ecosia can't ever be bought by another organization. So, for example, if Google wanted to buy Ecosia for 100 billion, um, the way that the company is structured means that Christian wouldn't be able to sell his shares. Um, and because of this, it means that we don't ha have to have uh, external pressure from shareholders in order to, to make money, in order to increase shareholder value. It means that we can focus our profits on planting trees because that is what our purpose is. And that is the way that Ecosia has legally been structured um, in, in the fact that we don't have to make shareholders rich. And our purpose instead is to plant as many trees as we can. And as well as being an environmentally friendly search engine, uh, we're also uh, very privacy friendly as well. So um, we do not store uh, internet searches or um, build um, personal profiles of our users. Uh, we uh, don't use any third party tracking um, and we permanently anonymize all of the uh, search engine um, sort of data that we receive um, after seven days. So. This really means that by searching with Ecosia, you are completely anonymous um, and um, as well as protecting your data, you're also helping to protect um, areas around the world which have you know, potentially faced deforestation and, um, and planting trees in locations where they are really needed. And another in interesting fact about Ecosia's operations um, is that we are um, a completely um, uh, renewable organization in the fact that we um, are, are carbon negative. So we produce um, more than double the amount of renewable energy than what is needed to power our search engine uh, servers. So, um, you know, as you can imagine, um, providing a search engine service um, to our 15 million users worldwide, um, you know, is, is, uh, is something that requires, you know, data centers and, um, and sort of energy um, uh, intensive, um, uh, you know, um, servers. Um, but what we do at Ecosia is we've purchased our own um, solar farm, which generates double the amount of renewable energy than, than what is required to power all of our servers globally. Um, and because we plant trees as well, um, which are sequestering carbon, it actually means that by using Ecosia, you are um, actually helping to reduce uh, the global levels of, of CO2. And I'm now going to uh, play you a video which goes into this topic in a tiny bit more detail. So here's the thing. The climate emergency is upon us. And if we want to make it through this, we have to plant millions of trees, which you know Ecosia does. But that's not going to be enough. We also have to say goodbye to fossil fuels once and for all and accelerate the transition to clean, renewable energy. All the experts agree. One of our highest priorities as a society has to be cuts to greenhouse gas emissions. So as a result, the move to renewable energies is absolutely critical as we attempt to try and address climate change. Ecosia started building solar plants in 2018. This way, we now feed enough renewable energy into the grid to power every single one of your Ecosia searches with 100% renewable energy. But there's more. So by running on 100% renewable energy and by using our surplus income in order to finance tree plant projects across the world, we are much more than just climate neutral. Each search is removing substantial amounts of CO2 from the air. By planting trees, we absorb CO2. And by producing renewable energy, we prevent CO2 from being released. But that's still not quite good enough for us. In 2019, we're becoming the first company to produce twice as much renewable energy as we need. This way, we feed enough renewable energy into the grid to power your searches and to crowd out dirty energy. So when you're using Ecosia, you're not just fighting climate change by planting trees, you're not just uh, running on 100% uh, of renewable energy, but you are actively supporting the energy transition to a fully renewable energy system. 
With the climate emergency upon us, we have no time to waste. By using Ecosia, you can both remove CO2 from the atmosphere by planting trees and prevent CO2 from being released in the first place by accelerating the transition to a sustainable, renewable future. So here's the thing. And so um, I'm now going to take you into the next part of the presentation, which is about Ecosia on campus um, and how you can get involved at your university and how you can influence a change um, at your campus uh, where you can have a positive um, environmental impact. Um, so I want to take you back to um, how I actually ended up at Ecosia. Um, so uh, when I was at university um, in the UK, I uh, launched a campaign to make Ecosia the default search engine at the university. Um, I was really inspired by Ecosia and its uh, business model, as well as its tree planting projects. And um, I thought it would just be a great idea to, um, to persuade the university to make the switch to Ecosia um, so that ultimately students across the campus could be helping to plant trees every time that they, they are searching for something. Um, so I launched the uh, Sussex on Ecosia campaign um, and uh, after we were able to persuade the university to make Ecosia the default, we then also started to help other students around the world to launch their own Ecosia campaigns. Um, so this is me um, uh, quite a few years back now um, at, the, at the Sussex campus, telling students about Ecosia um, and, uh, you know, sort of running competitions, uh, just inspiring students to, uh, you know, make the switch of, of their search engine and ultimately to uh, persuade the university to make it the default um, across campus. So we took part in lots of events, planting trees um, close to the campus um, and just had any opportunity that we had to um, be spreading the word and raising awareness about our campaign uh, among students. Um, and as I mentioned, we successfully persuaded the vice chancellor to make Ecosia the default search engine at the university. And this was us planting some trees um, on the campus to, um, to celebrate uh, the initiative. Um, and the reason behind this is because when an entire university makes Ecosia the default search engine, it has the potential to plant, you know, tens of thousands of trees over the years. Um, and so we really saw campaigning for Ecosia as a way that we could leave a lasting mark on the university and one that would continue to have an environmental impact, um, you know, even after graduating uh, for, for years to come. So we really saw it as, as a way of, um, you know, um, making the most out of our university experience and leading an environmental change. Um, and uh, so after campaigning at the University of Sussex and helping other students to, um, to launch campaigns, um, I then was offered a three month internship at Ecosia, uh, where I've been able to continue working on Ecosia on campus and helping students to um, launch their own campaigns. Um, and there's now over 280 uh, student campaigns around the world and uh, more than uh, 20 to 25 uh, universities have made Ecosia the default. And this is all thanks to student campaigners and students wanting to make a difference while they're at university. Um, the most of the campuses that have switched are in the UK, and we're also seeing um, a, a sort of momentum in Europe as well, where um, many campuses are, are making the switch to Ecosia to plant as many trees as possible. And so what does being an Ecosia on campus campaigner look like? And how do you go about persuading your university to make Ecosia the default search engine? Well, the way that this usually takes shape is students launch a social media campaign, um, as this is a great way to raise awareness of not only Ecosia, but your campaign to make it the default. Um, and also in-person activities. So handing out uh, succulents here um, and uh, sort of, you know, having a, a, a placement at uh, different fairs on campus is a great way to be meeting people face to face, telling them about Ecosia and, um, and sort of you know, gathering that momentum to ultimately persuade the university to make the switch. Um, and it's a really great way to be getting involved with other green initiatives at the university. So, um, you know, maybe there is a, a campaign to reduce plastic in the, the, the university canteen um, and 
um, and then you have your campaign for Ecosia. Um, and it's a really great way to meet other like-minded students at your university. Um, and working together is uh, ultimately a, a great way that that you can, uh, you know, have a successful campaign um, and, uh, you know, through through working and collaborating with others. And I mean, as well as running the social media campaign and meeting students on campus, um, it's also important to, uh, you know, develop skills about speaking to key university stakeholders. So running the Koji on Campus campaign means emailing IT and, you know, suggesting the idea that they switch to Ecosia. And so it uh, really can open up a lot of doors um, at, at, at your university and enhance your university experience. And uh, we provide a lot of support for our Ecosia on Campus campaigners. And one of the key things that we provide is a link to download the Ecosia extension. And this means that we can track how many searches and how many trees um, students at your university plant. Um, if a university makes the switch to Ecosia, we can also send a report which shows how many trees you've helped to plant. Um, and so this is a really great way that you can keep track of your, your campaign um, and measure your progress. And to give an example of a university that recently made the switch to Ecosia, um, I'm just going to talk about uh, Glasgow, um, because the student here uh, ran a campaign over the course of about a year, um, and he was gathering lots of support over social media and through different societies. And um, what his, his approach was, was to create an online petition. So he managed to gather over th uh, 500, um, 545 signatures. And so when he approached IT, he was able to say, look, we already have the support of, um, you know, over 500 students. Um, and this is something that students really want to see happen. You know, it's not just it's not just the idea of one person, um, you know, saying, oh, we should use Ecosia. But if you can show IT and you can show people at the university that it's something that students want, then um, this is sort of uh, one of the secrets of success, I would say. And so since the uh, start of uh, the autumn term, um, over 4,000 computers at the University of Glasgow were switched over to Ecosia. Um, and this was going to, on average, help to plant over 225,000 trees over the course of the year, which is a huge impact when you think about it. And when it's something as simple as changing a university's default search engine. Um, so the impact is really, really massive. And um, it's something that the universities are uh, you know, keen to, to get involved with as well. And so um, I'm just coming to the end of my presentation now. And if you hadn't heard of Ecosia yet, um, then I hope I've inspired you to uh, potentially give it a go. Uh, so there's a link here to download Ecosia. So if you go to ecosia.co forward slash campus party and download the Ecosia extension to your browser, uh, this means that your searches and your trees are going to contribute to the campus party um, community. And um, this is something that we'll be sharing in later updates as to how many new Ecosia users have, um, have sort of joined through Campus Party and how many trees those users are helping to plant. Um, if you don't already, please do follow Ecosia on uh, Instagram. Uh, we also have a fantastic YouTube channel where you can find out a lot more information about where we're planting trees. Um, and this is a really good way to sort of keep up to date with all of the, uh, the company's um, uh, initiatives and uh, find out more about where we're planting trees. And if you're really inspired and you're at university and you're thinking, do you know what, I could la launch an Ecosia on Campus campaign. You know, I think I could persuade my university to switch to Ecosia. Then, you know, I'm really here to help you to do that. <laughs> um, and uh, one of the first steps is to uh, follow Ecosia on Campus on Instagram. Um, and from the link in the bio, you'll find all of the resources that you need to uh, launch a campaign at your university. Um, and there's also a page where you can register your campaign um, and apply for one of these tracking links. So we can, we can monitor your, your campaign and, and let you know how many trees you've planted. And, um, you know, I really look forward to potentially following up with some of you and, uh, you know, working together to uh, plant as many trees as possible. And hopefully your university may be the next campus to, to make the switch to Ecosia. And 
I'm more than happy now to answer any questions that you may have, um, whether that's about Ecosia in general, whether that's about where we're planting trees, um, and also, um, you know, more than happy to, to talk about Ecosia on campus and how you can launch a campaign at your university. Oh, that's a wonderful question. Um, so, so no, no, I, I've only planted trees um, at a project in Scotland, um, which was we went to um, Glasgow for COP26 at the end of last year. And so um, we uh, were working with some students at the university and we, we planted uh, some Ecosia trees there. But generally, um, our trees are always planted by the local communities and uh, planted by people which uh, uh, live around the projects and where those trees have a benefit to, to the local people. So at Ecosia, we don't actually have like a, a volunteering program um, because it's really important for us to be working with the local communities um, as this is the best way to ensure that the trees are going to be planted in the right way and that they will survive long term. The question is, are you more focused on regenerating existing forests or creating new ones? What's the best option? And that's a fantastic question. Um, and restoring um, and, and, and sort of protecting uh, existing forests is um, absolutely fundamental for fighting climate change um, and is, is something that, um, you know, Ecosia really believes in as, as one of the most important things. Um, it's always, it's always, um, uh, important to be protecting the trees which are already in the ground and um, not cutting them down because you know that process release releases a huge amount of carbon so it's incredibly important to to be protecting uh, trees that are are, are, are sort of uh, currently standing um, but at Ecosia we we are on a mission to reforest areas that have faced deforestation in the past um, through planting native tree species and through building back the forest to to what it once was. So um, it's it's um, you know important for us to be planting you know as many trees as possible with the money that we make for advertising um, and restoring degraded areas uh, back to to how they once were. Um, and that's very much the the approach that we're we're taking to to our projects is um, is uh, you know trying to build back the forest and uh, by planting uh, you know native tree species. This is another good question. So do you buy land to plant trees or do you do it on public land? How does that work? And I would say that it really does vary from project to project. Um, so in, in some examples, um, you know, the we'll be planting on private land um, as as this is, um, you know, the, the landowner is happy to be planting trees here and there's, um, you know, an incentive to do so. Um, and um, it really does depend on on the the location and the project, um, and um, and so yeah, it would be hard to kind of give a specific example at this point, but um, uh, we're hoping to to kind of um, uh, explain this in a bit more detail over the year. Can we inv involve Ecosia in a local project? Do you work in all countries? Well, as I mentioned at the beginning, we do prioritize our tree planting to the biodiversity hotspots where, um, you know, it's vitally important to, to protect this unique biodiversity. But we are planning to plant trees um, across Europe um, more often than we, we have been in the past. Um, and um, so currently we plant trees in, in, in Spain um, and, uh, you know, this is an area of, of unique biodiversity and um, a place where um, it's important for us to 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 be restoring. Um, but um, yeah, I suppose my next question would be which which country um, and which local projects are um, I, I sort of, are you interested in planting trees at? Um, as it really sort of does depend um, in in what the local impact is. Um, and um, and so we would definitely consider um, a whole range of of countries. Um, and it's would be looking at a similar sort of metric. So how does the tree um, impact the environment in a positive way? And how does it impact the local community? So all of these things are taken into account before planting trees uh, in any country.
how many single clicks on an advert are required to plant a single tree on average? Now, this is a very good question. So as I explained, um, Ecosia makes uh, money through users clicking on the ads displayed in our search results. And it's very hard to give a, um, a, a sort of a, a precise answer here because ad clicks can actually vary in how much money they generate for us. So if somebody is searching for um, a search term that um, you know, lots of organizations want to compete for, um, then that ad click is actually going to give us more money to plant trees. Um, if it's a search term that um, you know, not many advertisers are, are really bidding for or, or want their search results to be, um, you know, their, their ads to be displayed um, under, then um, we don't make quite as much money. So it really does vary on what the, the user is searching for. Um, and um, I mean, on average, our, our, our global uh, average tree price this year is um, about uh, 25 euro cents. Um, but this is spread across our whole portfolio of projects. And in some locations, it's a lot more expensive to plant trees because, um, you know, of the climate. And, and in other locations, you know, we have to restore the soil before we can even plant the trees. And so these projects, um, you know, can be more expensive. Um, and so there are a lot of variables at play as to, you know, how much we make for per ad click and then how much, is it to, like, how much does it cost to plant a tree? Um, and so um, it would be hard to give, um, you know, um, a more sort of accurate um, description here. Like I wouldn't be able to say that one ad click equals the planting of a tree because um, it's not really that simple. But um, what I would like for you to take away is that, you know, just by using Ecosia as your default search engine, you're ultimately helping an organization that is using its profits to, to plant trees where they're needed most. And uh, making that simple switch is ultimately going to help to plant um, trees around the world. Um, so yes, I mean the other part of my role is that I'm I'm supporting organisations and and uh, you know large multinationals that want to make Ecosia the default search engine for employees. Um, and uh, similar to our university program, we're able to track how many trees ha have been planted and send a, a monthly report. Um, we do have a, a B2B page where you can find out how to make the switch to Ecosia at your company. Um, and um, we also have a contact form on the Ecosia website with a, um, a partnership option. Um, and if you were to send an email through there, um, you would come through to myself and I'd be more than happy to provide you with uh, some of those resources. And I think that's it for questions. And I'd just like to wrap things up by saying it's been a real pleasure to be part of the campus party this year. And uh, thank you for the wonderful questions. I'm so pleased that, um, you know, that there was uh, uh, such an interest in Ecosia. And uh, I hope that uh, this presentation has helped to fill in some of the gaps that you maybe had and uh, inspired you to start a campaign at your university or perhaps even just make Ecosia your default. Um, it's been a real pleasure speaking with you all today. And I wish you the best for the rest of the day and your weekend. Thank you very much. Bye for now.
Hello, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Marco Micozzi and I'm startup manager of the, of the Village by Sia, the innovation hub of uh, Credit Agricole Group in Milan. Uh, so thanks uh, to Campus Party for organizing and hosting this panel. Uh, we are here today to explore together a topic which is important as it can be, and yet uh, never discussed enough uh, how we can have an impact on our cities by creating network. Uh, so, we will try to add our brick to this building with our guest, uh, Bettina Mirabile. Hi, good morning. Good morning, everybody. Hi, hi Bettina. Uh, head of uh, CSV and Circular Economy, Innovation and Sustainability for Enel. And then uh, Valentina Cerolini. Yes, hi, yes. Valentina. hi Marco. Hello, everyone. So, CEO and co-founder of this app, a second-hand design market base, and Martino Cortese. Hi, Martino. Hi, everyone. Hi, Marco. Hi, Martino. So, uh, CEO and founder of CityBility, a local community maker. Uh, so, uh, we start with Daniel for the first question um, to Bettina. Uh, because the uh, energy industry is now uh, reaching the big public, uh, the question of sustainability is reaching the big public, uh, but uh, the question of circular economy, which is complementary, is often forgot. What is the annual approach to the topic? Thank you for the question, Marco. Actually, circular economy, uh, it's becoming pivotal for us. It's definitely reshaping our way of doing business. Uh, in fact, uh, we are rethinking the whole value chain from the very early design phase of our uh, business up to the end of life of our asset and product. Um, this is important for us because we want to reduce the uh, consumption of resources. We want to avoid as much as possible emission, but we also want to maximize the value from our uh, business model thanks to uh, sharing solutions. So uh, since we are talking about cities, actually circular economy is the exactly the business model that shifted us from working on a, a smart cities approach where a technology is essential to a sustainable cities approach where uh, innovation and cutting edge technologies are only the way to achieve more sustainable goals so for us it's important because um this change of mindset of the circular economy allowed us to move from uh, an approach where we were, were almost building something like a Blade Runner cities approach where technology was the only target to uh, a new solution where the cities are uh, an ecosystem where we want to ensure uh, economic uh, um, competitiveness, uh, social inclusiveness and environmental sustainability. So. Um, in this moment, also to meet the challenges of uh, uh, urbanization and of the climate change, cities are the place that should host uh, up to 70% of the global population up to 2050. In order to ensure the quality of life for the citizens, the energy sector and the NEL is doing quite a lot on this, um, on this task, uh, need to ensure the backbone for uh, the local development for uh, quality of life life for all citizens so uh, we are this is exactly the backbone where uh, we meet uh, different actors that are enabling the decade of uh, electrification so we are at uh, the backbone to connect uh, e-mobility smart home the distributed generation with the private uh, producer so uh, we are at the let's say the cornerstone uh, to uh, support the development or, uh, of more sustainable um, cities. To give you just one example of how we are embedding the circular economy business model in our business value chain, let me talk about the smart meters. This is a device that 
we are all familiar with because we have it at home. Uh, we have been challenging ourselves into uh, trying to utilize regenerated plastic from old meters to produce the new ones. And this was quite uh, a challenge because we have to comply with all the regulation and features that we need to, uh, to respect. And we did it leveraging on the local ecosystem with a new circular ecosystem and to um, and thanks to new actors, we have been able to, from one side, reach um, consistent reduction in the energy in the um, CO2 emissions. But at the same time, we have been able to boost the local uh, ecosystem and local enterprises uh, because this is a brand new uh, field of development. The manufacturing uh, industry is still in a very early stage. So this is an example of how we are going circular, trying to increase as much as possible regenerated material into our value chain. Okay, uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Bettina. We will talk uh, more about your project uh, later. Uh, but of course, we had an example of what a large company can do. Uh, smaller company can act as well. Uh, and uh, so I'd like to ask uh, uh, Valentina, what, what can they do? What do you do? And they think we have a um, sustainability manifesto that we can watch uh, to start our discussion. 10 million tons of furniture are thrown away every year in Europe. These start from point A, production, and then arrive at point B, disposal. A straight line, a linear economy. But today, we cannot continue to think linearly, thinking we own infinite resources. This is why it is necessary to favor a circular economy. DSUP is the marketplace that is innovating the consumption model of design furniture towards this direction, enabling the online resale of used furniture throughout Europe. Like any revolution system, DSUP has also drawn up its sustainability manifest the springboard to make its business even more sustainable. Here are the main points. One, becoming a benefit company is the starting point for an inclusive and innovative business. Two, innovating the consumption model of design furniture that has an intrinsic value made of precious materials that last over time. The goal is to make sure that these resources do not go to waste. To date, thousands of design pieces have been given a second life, avoiding excess production and the environmental costs of eventual disposal. But it is never enough. 3. The environmental impact must be minimized. Carbon neutral deliveries and website. The possibility to locally pick up products directly from the